Most people would agree that having a dominant season as a driver in the Cup Series is extremely impressive. However, what I think is more impressive is when a whole team dominates the entire year. And there was a team that didn't have more of a dominating performance than Rick Henrik did in 2007. <laughs> So back in 2007, Rick Henrik had four cars running full-time that season. Kyle Busch would be driving the number five machine, while Jeff Gordon would be driving his iconic number 24 car. Then we had Casey Mears in the number 25 machine, and then Jimmy Johnson, the Fendi champion, would stay in the number 48 lows. What this team was able to do was an absolute ass-kicking. Let's first start off with Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch didn't have the season that we're used to seeing him see in the 2010s, but this was still the beginning of his career, and it was kind of one of the very first races that he got a victory at. He would get his one and only victory in the 2007 season at the Bristol Motor Speedway race. What made this race so special was this was the introduction of the brand new car, the Generation 5 car, or better known as the Car Tomorrow. Even though he said he didn't really like the car too much, I mean he still had a really good season because even though they had those races with the Car Tomorrow, he still was able to nab 11 top 5 finishes and 20 top 10 finishes. Casey Mears is the next one up in the number 25 machine and believe it or not he was able to get a victory as well. In a fuel mileage run in the Coca-Cola 600, he was able to stretch out his fuel farther than anyone else in the competition and be able to claim his first and only victory. While getting a victory in a fuel mileage run is not the most impressive thing in the world, the fact that he got his most ever top 5 finishes in the season as well as his top 10 finishes is still very impressive, especially for being the 4th car for Rick Henrik. Now let's move on to the guys who absolutely kicked ass this season. So 2007 must have been the year where Steve Latar and Jeff Gordon started hitting it on all cylinders because they were able to get 6 victories throughout the year, some of them being in the Generation 4 car as well as some others being in the car tomorrow. And they were also able to get 21 top 5 finishes as well as 30 top 10s. Just to give you an idea, during that season he finished in the top 10 83% of the time. With an average finish of 7.1, which we mentioned in the last few videos, is super impressive. Believe it or not, he was not able to get the championship that year. The person to get the championship was none other than Jimmy Johnson. There's one thing Jimmy Johnson and Chuck and Alex know how to do in the late 2000s, that was get victories in the final 10 races. Jimmy Johnson already had a successful season that year, already having an average finish of 10.1. However, it was the last 10 races where he was able to get the upper edge on his teammate Jeff Gordon. Jimmy Johnson would not finish worse than 14th in the last 10 races of the 2007 season and would actually get four victories in a row. With the win at Martinsville, Atlanta, Texas, and Phoenix, he was able to pull away from his teammate Jeff Gordon going into the final race at Homestead. With 10 victories throughout the season, 20 top five finishes, and 24 top tens, he was able to claim his second championship in his NASCAR Cup Series career. So when you count up all the victories Rick Henrik had that season, he had 18 victories, which means Rick Henrik was in victory lane 50% of the time. Over 80 four top tens and less than nine DNFs throughout the entire season from all four of their cars, it's safe to say that this is going to be one of the most dominant teams in NASCAR history. 